of my lecture dedicated to the fit of the liner to the final fit of the liner how a liner is supposed to sit on the teeth let's talk about that the liner has to be fitted uh, very tightly it has to cover the gingiva at least on two millimeters we discussed that that will increase the retention of course there are some undercuts black triangles recessions or artificial crowns a liner could be modified and not necessarily for two millimeters would cover the gingiva but in general we have to try to trim it uh, in, uh, like that so the incisor ledge has to be perfectly coincident with the incisor ledge of the liner a liner has to uh, uh, be uh, snugly fixed on the posterior teeth and it has to cover the last teeth in the arch for example first on second molars but it doesn't necessarily that they have to com cover completely the distal surface if the liner is not covering uh, completely the distal surface I, I'm covering occlusal surface of the posterior teeth and not properly fitted on them so the teeth would be displaced spontaneously in extrusion some problems that could uh, influence the fitting of the liner first of all it could be the technical laboratory problems for example it could be just not an enough uh, precision of their impression it could get some kind of distortion uh, shrinkage or some kind of problems in taking impression also we talked about the 3d printing about some technical steps we will not go back to them and and uh, with time in any case the fit of the aligner on teeth would only get worse so no matter what kind of we have technological process no matter how ideally we would uh, plan virtual setup in any case the mistake uh, the, l the leg of the biologic response would be uh, stacking in a liner and it will uh, lead to the space between the incisal edge of the liner and incisal edge of the teeth usually in norm it happens maybe to the 25th or 30th liner so when you have these kind of visible visible clearance visible space between the liner edge and uh, edge of the teeth sometimes this space appears earlier because the patient is not very uh, I'm nicely motivated and in my practice it's also only one case like that I made a picture of it see patient just did not use aligners because no matter that the clinical case was very uh, easy just crowding so aligners were not fit and we had to do the re uh, revision so the patient has to follow the instructions and wear the liner 22 hours a day also the movements uh, could be blocked for example because uh, in setup we had some kind of unrealistic movements like here you see uh, some kind of attempts to change bodily the position of the teeth some complicated rotations so all and all not worked out moments would be adding up would be piling up as a snowball and they will increase the level of the mistake that will lead to the bigger uh, discrepancy of the position of the edges of the liner and of the teeth sometimes the liner could be physically damaged for example the patient could disinfect it in the boiled water and it could be deformed but these are rare cases the most popular is uh, maybe some laboratory problems or for example 3d printing scanning um, and mounting was uh, did with some kind of pro uh, mistakes and distortions and the main thing is an inadequate planning of the 3d virtual plan what are the solutions if the liner is not nicely fitted on the teeth first you have to check 
the fit of the previous aligner, whether it's fitted nicely or not. If the previous aligner also not completely fitted, maybe it's better to prescribe its use for one more week. Maybe it's better to use IPR. If the previous aligner is seated properly, then maybe uh, we should continue wearing of the current aligner, but uh, we will sh should uh, give aligner tray seaters. These are like chewies or rolls uh, that the patient would uh, bite on and it will help the aligner to be fitted on the teeth. Also, we have to uh, uh, check the patient more often for example, each week, because the clearance between the, the, the liner and the teeth is a sign that the treatment is not going according to the plan, plan even in the small space. The most often problem uh, of the not complete fitting of the liner after the uh, not enough planning is not performed IPR in a certain period of time. The, uh, I see it often, I see many doctors are afraid of doing IPR. Maybe they're afraid, maybe they are lazy, but because the IPR was not performed in a, a, a right period of time, that's why we have these kind of mistakes and eyeliner wouldn't be fitted. So check contacts, perform IPR in a, a, a certain time when it is supposed to be performed. Also, extrusion is quite complicated movement. If extrusion didn't work out as we planned in the setup, also this would lead to the to the uh, clearance between teeth and aligner. But we already know how to fix these problems quickly and easily with the use of the additional elements. Also, the same with rotation. If we uh, plan in the setup some. Uh, complicated rotations, premolar, premolars, canines, or even incisors didn't rotate, didn't turn. Before we do a refinement treatment, first we'll try to to finish the rotation with auxiliaries. We'll do cutouts in the liner, as we already discussed. If attachment are not coincident with their uh, the uh, uh, attachment part in the liner with a slot in the attachment, just remove this attachment because it will only create more uh, disturb, uh, more problem for the fitting of the, it doesn't help do the refinement treatment like it's called in the liner. So complete restart of the treatment. I told you about tray sitters, uh, Invisalign call them chews. These are the plastic rolls that patient has to bite on, I'll give them to the patients. Couple of these rules and ask patients five minutes each morning and the evening, first three days after the placing of the new aligner, of course, bite with the liners. So on these rules that for better fitting, ask uh, patients, all the patients, how useful were these tray sitters? And the opinion of the patient is that that will be completely useless or they really help the liner to fit perfectly. So tray sitters at least they will do not harm. So I will prescribe very use by all the patients. If in case of three days the uh, liner is not completely fitted, I will ask patients to use tray sitters more so that the liner could be fitted uh, uh, to the end. And we talk about the refinement, refinement treatment as everything goes wrong. We couldn't finish the correction uh, only by the initial series of aligners. Then we'll do the refinement. We'll I'll call it revision. What I do? I do revision in cases when I see uh, the clearance between the aligner and the tooth from one to two millimeters. I understand that I wouldn't be able to finish the treatment and it's uh, 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 be, uh, 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 it is a long way to the end and because the, uh, the, uh, the hardest part of the liner incisor ledge is pushing the air, I understand that I will not be able to finish the correction with this series of aligners. I will do the revision, refinement treatment. I, I, uh, I like to do it through the impressions. I do silicon impressions. I pull the models. And on the models, I 
remove the attachments and the patient uh, continue wearing aligners with previous attachments because if I remove attachments and even uh, uh, taking into consideration that a liner is not completely fitted, all attachments uh, they places uh, uh, it holds the liner on the teeth and uh, remains the uh, the correction that was already performed. If I remove the attachments, the liner would have just fallen off, and then by the time I would be ready to uh, uh, to give to the patient refined alignments, there is a big probability that it would not be fit properly. So I remove attachments from the teeth, old attachments, only before I place new one. And patient uh, goes out with a new series of aligners. It's very important to understand the reason why we had to do this revision, this restart of the treatment. So do more pictures, analyze your work. In my clinic, if I plan for my patients uh, set up by myself and I'm not planning uh, bodily movements, I do everything in layers, so according to the biomechanics and I add overcorrection, uh, so in 85% of the cases I could finish with initial series of aligners without uh, correcting or refinement aligners. And let's have a look at the video, how I place attachments. So I share my experience. Alignment could be debonded if you didn't prepare teeth properly. And unfortunately, I couldn't hear the doctor because the music is louder than his voice. But I guess he's talking about a sand blast and the teeth before applying the adhesive. I'm sorry, uh, the the music was switched on. I didn't hear that. Oh, well, the music was quite interesting there, but maybe it's would be more useful not to listen to the music, but to listen to my narrative. So what I'm doing, we start from doing sand blasting. So 50, 50 microns of aluminum oxide I use to prepare the enamel for the uh, bonding of any elements, whether it's attachments, brackets, uh, buttons, any other elements that are bonded to the enamel or to the crowns, artificial crowns. And I think that's the main uh, part of preparing of the enamel because attachments uh, they have the tendency to be debonded just to minimize the risk of their debonding we have to prep the enamel uh, to uh, mechanically and chemically then our chemical preparation of the teeth I use uh, the uh, materials from Reliance Orthodontics. I guess it's the best company that produces for the orthodontics all the chemical solutions for preparations. I 
use 10% orthophosphoric acid. Onto the surface uh, where I will place attachments. Then I will wash out the, uh, the acid. I dry teeth and then apply bond. I like to use with a bond Assure or Assure Plus from Reliance, that bond that gives me a possibility to bond any lens to any surface, to enamel, zirconia, metal, to the gold, to the amalgam, to anything. A perfect bond. For the last five years, I don't remember, I remember any uh, debonding of the attachment. I place attachments on segments. I use a stiff uh, a splint 0 0.5 millimeters, uh, and I, I bond them one on uh, each, each attachment a, in a, uh, one uh, amount of time, just to place them correctly. I apply composite in the slot for the attachment in this spl splint. I place it, I hold it uh, with the fingers and metal instrument. I uh, push on this fragment on the tooth to, to the tooth, and my assistant is do a light curing of the composite. Before, so you see, I push it until it will be polymerized. So I place attachment. Uh, oh each attachment so separately i don't like the idea of placing attachments in groups immediately on several teeth because here uh, we can uh, not have uh, proper uh, proper pushing on the uh, of a spleen a splint to the teeth so uh, we will change the geometry of the attachment and it will not work properly so one by one I will apply composite, I will push with the spatula to the enamel and assistant is making the light curing. Usually the placement of attachment takes about 20 minutes. Then I remove are these segments, are these trays for attachments and, and attachment stays on enamel. They never stay on the in the trays then the polishing i remove the excess of the composite that uh, stuck for example from the edges of the attachment or from the edges of the trays that's it and in the end let's talk about the problem that happens a lot is a posterior open bite. As usual, it occurs when we advance lower jaw, when we get interference between incisors and canines, the patient closes and all contacts are on anterior teeth and posterior teeth are in disocclusion. Also, the second reason of the getting posterior open bite is that when patient uses aligners, especially patients with a increased tonicity of the masticating muscles, also when we squeeze teeth with aligners, mostly we have contacts with of posterior teeth, so they will be um, displaced and intrusion. So posterior open bite is usually uh, happens in case of the uh, prolonged corrections. In um, simple corrections, it never occurs when we just in, uh, line incisors for three, four, six months. We don't have this kind of adverse effect, but when the correction is quite long with expansion, with some other movements, with digitalization, we usually see these problems. So how can we correct this problem? There are three ways to overcome this problem. First, as you see, so we advanced lower jaw, 
everything is good, but we have posterior open bite. The first solution is, is to cut the aligner uh, on, uh, in the area of the teeth that intruded, so the teeth would go in spontaneous extrusion. So what I do, uh, I cut the liner uh, uh, distally from from from, from premolar. So uh, can I answer now? Wait until I uh, until posterior teeth would get in a physiological context. We remove the acrylic, and we wait, and we get uh, a nice. Uh, contacts. One more thing to overcome this problem. We start correction, for example, before that with distalization, not enough space, we start to distalize, we get open bite, so the teeth are not in contact, or they are only in contact on canines. On one side, as we see that the teeth are in this occlusion, so in the movements uh, still going on, and closer to the finish, everything uh, is corrected by itself. Uh, so we see uh, several months after the finish of the corrections. I think that's a second solution. It's just to uh, uh, release this situation, just feel, uh, to wait until the finish of the corrections, and teeth would be uh, just. Uh, put in their own position and the open bite will disappear spontaneously. Some examples. We perform the distillation. When we planned distillation on computer, of course, we were trying to make the bodily displacement, to make the parallel movement. So or they will not be rotated during the distal dis movement. You see there, we push on attachment, the tooth goes in rotation, so no matter how beautiful we will plan the setup, it doesn't make sense se to uh, play setup beautifully, uh, because the nature, well, the nature would do everything as it sees, sees fit. The teeth would be moving according to the antagonist. So they will move, they will tilt, they will rotate. So we'll have some different position from the initial plan. You see, uh, wisdom teeth are stretched and moved uh, spontaneously without any force applied to this tooth. So sometimes when you get open bite, especially when you do distalization or work with the posterior teeth, just wait till the end and uh, take time, just wait until the teeth spontaneously would ad adapt to the new occlusion. Another uh, example, we know that uh, uh, dental expansion happens quite easily with the liners, so the expansion was quite good. The arch, uh, dental arches are quite even and aligned, but if we see on posterior teeth, when we started to uh, move the left side, so when started to move posterior teeth uh, buckly on the left side, what we are getting, we're getting disocclusion. We don't have any uh, uh, occlusional contacts here, and so and we don't have any intercuspidation, so we have the big probability of the relapse. So to have the stable expansion, we don't have to do it dentally, but we have to do it with a surgical assisted technique. Because even on these pictures, you can see that the patient has skeletal expansion. The lower jaw is quite big. So we have the skeletal shift of the lower jaw to the left side. A class 3 tendency. So uh, narrowing of the um, uh, upper jaw. So the surgical case, and it could be dealt with surgery. And in this situation, uh, we can make expansion, but after we uh, remove the aligners, everything will go back to the initial situation. And the third option of, of the op open bite between posterior teeth is to try to squeeze it with elastic chains. Uh, to see the open bite between posterior teeth, maybe because of the difference between the setup and reality, 
maybe um, some reasons that are not uh, depends on us. So you see the aligners are not quite good in here in a line in occlusal plane. So some teeth are removed bodily, some are moved by uh, inclination. So we prescribe uh, you uh, wearing of elastics. Here uh, we use them from lingual side on upper jaw. And with the help but of buttons and elastics, we could get uh, intercuspidation for these patients. So the case with extraction, I receive the slight open bite uh, in posterior regions, just not to get the relapse that I'm afraid of. So I prescribe to the patient triangle elastics and I manage to stabilize this situation uh, thanks to getting their intercuspidation. As my practice showed and some uh, articles I cited, uh, the IPR that we calculate on computer or the Invisalign calculate or another company, a liner company, it would be 50% uh, more than the separation that we uh, finally perform. So please organize this right down. Do we have any questions? I uh, apologize for uh, maybe some kind of misunderstanding during my lecture. It's the first time I present this lecture. It's a completely new material, so nobody has seen it before. I was preparing this lecture uh, for the last couple of weeks. I, every day I even uh, took a vacation and I didn't leave through, I didn't, I didn't ideally uh, become friends with these slides. So I was talking about it in a slow uh, uh, temp, a slow uh, speed, but I think everything was quite uh, understandable. And I tried to aggregate my experience for the last eight, nine years and uh, of how we can solve problems with aligners. So I thank you for your attention, dear doctors. I, I was very pleased to work with international audience, with Ohis company. So I wish you to have a good day, good evening, uh, good night. Uh, regards from Russia.